Hi, I'm Mary May. Thanks so much for following me on my YouTube channel. Uh, I do apologize, this last year has been just crazy busy, um, but exciting. Uh, a lot of different things happening. I completely redesigned and redid my online school website, so please take a look at that and see what uh, lessons there are. Um, at the moment, there's over 300 different videos on that school. Um, and also, very, very exciting, I just finished writing uh, my first book and it's called uh, Carving the Acanthus Leaf. Um, it's been a three-year process of writing that and it's been really intense, uh, but it's exciting. It's at the printers right now and uh, due out in November. Um, Pre-orders are available through Lost Art Press and also um, if you pre-order, you can have immediate access to a downloadable PDF of the entire book. So you will be able to read it, you just won't be able to have it in print until November. So please look below uh, in the description of this video for any kind of links um, to the online school or the, uh, the book site. Um, you can also sign up for my newsletter um, just to receive updates of what is happening in my world. But enjoy this lesson on carving a sunburst. Hi, I'm Mary May, and this is an update to my online school of traditional wood carving. Now, I say traditional wood carving, and it sort of veers a little bit off of that, but there are a lot of very traditional styles taught. Now, I just wanted to explain, I have really updated recently the website. Um, there's a lot of new features. Um, I wanted to just, first of all, go through some of the lessons that are on my school. Um, we recently redid some of the beginner projects. This one is just a very simple flower, and then the camellia flower, or also it can be considered a rose. Those are actually two free lessons. Now my online school has, uh, there are eight lessons that are available for free, and it really, uh, I have a step-by-step -step process of going through this and also a lot of written material. So you can go through that process, um, it's all free. Then if you wanted to keep on going with your carving, um, here are some examples of some of the other projects I have, other lessons. Um, this is on how to carve a face. Here is one on carving an owl, a barn owl. All right, and those are both intermediate projects. And also, um, if you're into period furniture, um, antique restorations, that type of thing, um, the Newport shells, the convex and the concave Newport shells. Uh, those are complete lessons and these are from start to finish all the way through. And this is one that I just recently put on. This is for a fireplace mantle. This is the center panel, uh, that sort of American Rococo fireplace. And then to go with that, it's actually, it goes on either side of it, right? So it kind of goes like that. All right, and there's another one on that side. <laughs> so um, those are also complete projects from start to finish. Um, they get a little complex, those ones, but then there's a lot of uh, beginner projects uh, that will just help you get started, learn how to work with the grain, and I add a new video every week. So that keeps me very busy and out of trouble <laughs> and also keeps me in my workshop a lot. Now one of the new features that I have added to my online school is you can check off all of the lessons that you've completed. Um, you have your own personal record where you can go on the website and find out which ones you've checked off. Um, also I have a new wood carving forum. So if you're a member of the school, uh, even a free member, free member you, you can participate in the forum, ask questions, answer questions questions, help people out, um, just communicate. And I love that part of it because a lot of times I'm here on this side of the camera and I don't get a lot of interaction with you out there. So the forum is great for that. So feel free to look at my website. Um, 
sign up as a free member, go through those beginner lessons, and just also as a free member, you can see what's available as a premium member. Um, and right now, I believe um, as of today, there are close to 300 different individual episodes. Um, and I believe that adds up to about 130. 30 or 140 different lessons, complete lessons. So instead of just giving you information about the online school, I'm actually going to do a little mini lesson right here. And I am going to show you how to do part of this sunburst. Now this is for also for a fireplace mantle. If you look behind me, this is for a very ornate fireplace mantle, right like that. Okay, center, large starburst there. And this actually is going right here. Oops, the other side. Anyway, the, the green tape actually is the, uh, the molding, the top molding. So I already did the other side, but anyway, it's like that. Okay, there's a little bit of an edge right there, and that is going to hook over that way. So, um, but it goes on the other side of it. But I'm going to show you how to do this. This is in cypress. Now, cypress can be a kind of a challenging wood. Um, it can be a little spongy. The, the, your tools really, really need to be sharp. Make sure that they are razor sharp, because if you try going across the grain with dull tools, it'll just shred the wood. Uh, so and now I don't normally work in cypress. Um, I like to work in things like basswood, butternut, mahogany, um, the walnut is another one. Just um, uh, a little bit easier to deal with than cypress. Um, pine is also one that just really is, is a little challenging to do, but the customer uh, wanted this, and so that's what I'm gonna be carving this in. So let me clear off the bench and I'll get started. Okay, so what you're gonna see here is basically the same format that all of my lessons are. Three camera views. Um, I sort of switch between one whenever I cover one side up. Um, it'll end up uh, you know, switching cameras so you can actually see all the steps. And then also I can actually talk to you with this camera. So um, I just want to um, show you the technique that I use. Now I'm just gonna show you a quarter of this, but basically each side um, is the same technique. So I'm gonna take this is a number 710. Now, as uh, you watch the videos on my online school, um, I show what tool I use, and I leave that up on the screen for as long as I'm using that tool, so it doesn't get confusing. And just making a vertical cut right into this area here, just to define that edge. Okay, so this little area there is going to kind of be a little thumbnail area, little area cut out. Okay, now normally what I do is I actually take a V-chisel. I don't like to just do these stop cuts right into wood like this, all right, because there's the potential of it breaking. Um, however, with Cypress, it's a little different um, because it's a little spongy and a little bit more difficult in that way. I um, it doesn't accept a V chisel, which I normally do. Normally, what I would do is take my V chisel right along this edge here just to remove that wood so that when I make that cut, it kind of uh, gives it or gives and um, doesn't break the carving or doesn't break the wood around it. So, now I want you to see something here. Do you see how this, because this is an oval, the actual curve of this changes slightly as it goes around. Okay, so I'm just, all I'm doing is really going right on that line. Now I ended up transferring this on to the wood uh, with carbon paper. I just had the template and just traced over the template. Now there's a couple different ways that this style is shown. It's either has a inside corner there, and this is rounded, all right? So it's a bump and a bump and a bump inside corner, or it's hollowed out here with a high ridge. And for this particular one, that's what we're gonna be doing, hollowing this out and leaving that line as a ridge. Okay, so after just defining that, because that, that's really what you call a stop cut. Okay, and this is where I'm going to take a number 710 and start to 
take that area down. And it's important that you really twist the tool because very easy to hit this part very hard. And if you twist the tool, it's actually gonna control that from hitting it too hard. Okay, now notice what happens. Now the grain is going like this. So this particular one that I chose to start with, that's going about a 45 degree angle to the grain. Now watch what happens. As I'm coming in this direction, one side of the tool is gonna cut against the grain and one side's gonna cut with the grain. So what I do is I make an initial cut well enough away from this edge so it doesn't snag the wood and break it. And then each cut from this point on, I'm sort of leaning the tool so it just cuts on the one side so it goes with the grain. So I'm just gonna leave that line as close as possible. Now this area here, I'm gonna use a smaller gouge. Okay, now in order to clean this area up, I need to turn around and go in this direction. Okay, I just have to sort of sneak in that little corner there. And then continue that. And see, notice that sort of sideways slicing cut. And then coming down in that direction. So I've got the tool, so it's just cutting on that one side. Just go so it cleans up that little area. Now I'm gonna use a smaller one. This is a number seven, eight. So um, same curvature, number seven, but a little smaller. So number seven curvature, eight millimeters. Okay, and just try to blend those two. Now this little area here, this is actually going to have a piece of wood glued here and there's going to be a little bit of a raised bump there. So I'm just going to bring this right up to it and um, let it let it run right in there. Just stop it right that, at that corner. Okay, so um, now I wanted to show you, I mentioned um, by using a V chisel, see what I'm doing is running right up to there, right up against there. Um, if you're gonna be using another type of wood um, that <laughs> was not as sort of spongy as this, I would take my V chisel and just go right along that edge. Okay, I can probably still do it here, but it doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to be as necessary for the cypress, but it gets a little splintery. So what I do quite often is lower it down or on one side and then I come down on the other side. Okay, so you go to the, because it gets deeper in the center. Okay, so um, you go around all of that and then you would make that vertical cut. And then what happens is that vertical cut then is cut like that and it gives towards the V cut and therefore does not damage this area in here. So you've removed this bulk of the wood away so that it um, basically when you make that stop cut, it just gives towards the V cut. Okay, a good technique to prevent breaking. Okay, so I'm gonna go on to this next one. All right, same thing. Go sort of down the center. All right, but you see it's sort of snagging there, but I wanna make sure then, come in on this side and just lean on that one side. Okay, and then come in this direction and go right up into there. Now this is a really good example of one of those lessons where it's a great idea to be able to use your right and left hand because each one of these rays on the sunburst, you're having to switch. So as I'm coming in this direction then, lean on the one side here and then come in this direction and go in that 
go in the reverse direction. So you see, if I wasn't able to use my left hand as that sort of lead hand, which I am very right-handed, but if I wasn't able to switch back and forth like that, I would have to physically take that wood and turn it and it would get very awkward. Okay, now as I'm coming along here, now we're starting to get almost directly across the grain there, so it can be a little challenging and a little harder to get the tool through the wood. And this is also, if you don't have sharp chisels, then this is where you'll definitely, they'll definitely let you know Okay, so I'm really trying to remove any tool facets, any tool marks. But you can see there's just a little more of a rough surface there, and that's just the nature of the wood. And also, actually, I, I sharpen all of my tools before this, really sharpen them up on the leather strop and everything. And, uh, um, I, but it takes maybe two or three times across these rays to really dull the chisel. So there's something in the cypress that really um, causes, I don't know if there's minerals or grit or something, but it really does dull the chisels. I don't know of any other wood that really does that. Actually, I carved in teak one time, and that was, it has silica in it and that really dulls your chisels. Okay, now I'm gonna have to come back towards myself, which I really don't like to do. So what I do is for something like that, I step away from the wood, all right? So I'm gonna go in that direction and it's a little awkward cut. At this point, you may want to just stop and turn the wood around at this point because I'd much rather you be safe. All right, so just a little bit. But whenever I do cut towards, if there's any kind of back cutting or any kind of cut in this direction, step away from the wood. And so if it does slip for some reason, or if this slips out of the clamps, then it's uh, the tool's going there and I'm not there. <laughs> so just a safety precaution. Okay, and now I'm just gonna continue with the smaller number seven. Now, another thing with the uh, free lessons on my online school, I go over several methods of sharpening. Sharpening the curved gouge and also sharpening the V-chisel. Two of um, just the most common used tools, just the regular curved gouge, like this one. And then also that V-chisel, which I tend to use a lot except for this lesson. Okay, so as I'm coming down here, right, coming just on that one side, and you can kind of see, I don't know if you can tell, that it's getting a little rough there, and that's because that side of the tool is going against the grain. So that initial cut through, and then from that point on, just lean the tool, and then I'm gonna come in this direction and lean the tool on that side. So again, those free beginner lessons on my school, one of them is how to carve a donut. I know it sounds very silly and basic, but it's an amazing lesson on how to work in the correct grain direction. Okay, and then this side. And I'll just do those two more. Okay, so the first one through, just kind of go centered. And so that in case that does snag, I've got a lot of wood on the edge. Now notice also that my hand is touching this at all times. That's how to, I'm controlling the tool from hitting too hard. Okay. 
So as I come right up to there, I don't want to hit that hard because that whole area will lift up. So along with that twisting motion and really good control and holding on to the tool. So I would encourage you from day one of putting the chisels in your hand is really work through that awkwardness of using both hands. I am very, very right-handed, so um, using left-handed is, is really not natural for me, but once you work through it, it actually comes pretty quickly. Becomes very natural. Okay, so this is where I can sort of go back and forth because I really do want a nice sharp corner there. If it starts to sort of veer off, then just go on the other side and sort of scoot it over and do a little bit closer and closer together. Okay, a little, little bit there. Now this area here, I could end up just leaving it like this and have a very interesting sort of spider web look. All right, obviously I wouldn't have transferred that line on there, but that is also seen in very traditional fireplaces. Um, however, I'm gonna show you how to do this little kind of a fingernail notch cut. And again, this is where I could take my V-chisel right, like that and like that to remove that, all right? And what that does is it allows me to do a lot of the details in there without having just this thick amount of wood in that area, okay? And actually, surprisingly, that seems to be working pretty well. It wasn't working on the other ones for some reason. But it does, the, the uh, cypress tends to splinter and eh, I'll just go for it. Do it all like this. Okay, so shallow and then deeper as it goes to the center. And right there. Okay, you see it just uh, sort of clings. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, um, oops, let's see, the next step is coming along here and just defining this as a vertical cut. So there's vertical cut there and it's deeper in the center. That's why I'm sort of tipping the tool like that. It's deeper in the center and I don't want it to go very deep right at where this line joins right there. So it's going to be like that and then like that and just go walking along on each one. Now this is a number 314. Almost a flat one. It's number 3 curvature, 14 millimeters. All right, okay. Now, so that wall is cut. And the next thing I'm going to do is come in from this direction, about 45 degree angle, and just scoot it along like that. Okay, and I'm going to have to do a little bit of cleanup along the inside edge there, but let me just go and do all of these. Okay, again, the change, uh, the, the shape changes slightly as you go around. It gets a little bit more sort of elongated as it curves around. So you're going to have to do a little bit of adjusting, possibly changing gouges as it curves around. Now I actually have a lesson um, very similar to this design on my school already and it's actually 
carved in poplar, which is another one of my not so favorite woods because again, it can be kind of spongy. All right, now I'm just gonna go back and this is a number three, six, and just gonna do a little bit more of defining of that because that first cut, I wasn't really able to get that full depth comfortably. So I'm just gonna define that a little bit more clear. All right, and then come back. All right, so that's basically the technique. And as you go around, the direction of the grain switches. So as you come around this side, you can carve in this direction on that side and this direction on that side, this direction, that side, this direction, that side. And as you go to this, um, the third quadrant, um, you reverse it. So go this direction and this direction. Let me just draw that in there. So from here, that direction, that direction, all right, for that, Next one, and then in this direction, that direction. Now it may get confusing because there's a lot happening here, but um, depending on what kind of wood you use, it will tell you pretty quickly what direction um, is the right way. All right, so the, the trick with, um, with this is you don't want to go in the wrong grain direction because if I would cut in this side, on that side, it would end up breaking that nice clean edge. Okay, so it's this side and this side. But if I would do it in reverse, that side or that side, it will definitely catch that and lose that nice clean edge. Now I can get a little closer to that. And you can also just very, very lightly sand the surface. Now I don't like to sand just because it's, it's a messy, dusty thing. Um, but this is the type of thing that, um, you know, you can certainly, you know, maybe curl a little sandpaper um, and just run it along there. Um, just be careful if you do sand, do not carve after you sand. There's a real potential of having little bits of grit in the wood. Um, I mean, Cypress is bad enough <laughs> dulling my chisels, um, but it will actually dull your chisels very quickly. Now I've heard that there is some, you know, sandpaper out there that doesn't leave grit. If you can find that, great. Um, but also just keep in mind, if you do sand, just you don't want to lose that very fine, sharp definition. Don't soften those sharp corners. Um, maybe, you know, soften the inside curves if you may have some tool marks, but um, I would really hesitate to soften those, you know, you, you put all that time into <laughs> making these nice sharp corners. Don't sand them off. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, that is it. Um, I'm almost done with this complete fireplace. Um, be good to have that finished. It's going for a, uh, going inside a Charleston, about a 1780s home to match an original federal style fireplace. And so that's pretty exciting. Uh, I believe the original was from about 1820. So feel free to wander through my website, see what lessons there are, learn all you can um, from the free beginner lessons, the sharpening, the flowers, and then venture into all of the wild and varied projects that are in the premium membership. And that is um, a lot of different projects. Just search through and see if there's anything that interests you. I love carving and I really do hope you get addicted <laughs> because it really, really is a lot of fun. So happy carving, everybody. Mm -hmm.